Hi, my name is Joshua Stolman from BrooklynComicShop.com, and I am excited to share with you not just one piece of original artwork from the 1960s, but an entire book of comic book art. And finding such a um, collection together in one spot is incredibly rare. I've actually never experienced it before, um, but we have the entire artwork and additional bonus material uh, to Classics Illustrated. The Jungle Book. Now, The Jungle Book was done in um, 1968, but it had previously been done by Classics Illustrated in 1951 by Alex Bloom. And you can see that the two artworks are wildly different. Um, this artwork by Alex Bloom was done first. Alex Bloom worked for Classics Illustrated, and I think he worked all the way back to when it was called Classics Comics in 1940. Um, and then you have uh, Norman Nodell, who did a ton of work for classics in the later years, from the mid-1950s into the 1960s, and then, of course, this 1968 uh, version of Jungle Book. So we have the entire original artwork from the second version of the Jungle Book by Norman Nodell. And I just want to give you a little bit of look of why the artwork was needed. You can see in the original 1950s book, You've got the background, you've got a bear, you've got um, Mowgli, the artwork, not so, um, not so great. It's very um, rudimentary in, in a way that it does tell the story. It does give you um, the story of the Jungle Book and you can read it as a child. But the artwork here, it just doesn't seem to be very exciting, even for Classics Illustrated, which had a very illustrated style, very stiff. Um, descriptive style. Yes, the story is there, but I mean here you can see Mowgli almost looks like he's a Caucasian. The animals don't really look, um, you know, really ferocious or terrifying. It's just very matter-of-fact. And uh, even though this was made in the 19, early 1950s, not very exciting, um, and it was reprinted several times. What happened is Disney came out with their version of The Jungle Book in 1967, and it was one of the highest um, grossing animated films. So when that happened, Classics Illustrated saw an opportunity to revise their artwork. And you can see all the way from the very first page how exciting the first page already is. The bear is, is ferocious. Mowgli looks like an Indian child. He actually looks closer to what is in the Disney movie. Um, you have the tigers that actually look like tigers. And even though the artwork still is that illustrated style in that it's going to give you um, lush backgrounds, jungle scenery, animals um, that are correctly drawn and in a way that you can still follow the original story and the content, you can see already that the artwork from the second edition is, is really much better and much more cleaner than the uh, Alex Bloom's first work. And by the time um, 1967, 1968 rolled around, Alex Bloom had already been, um, he, was, he was old. I think he died in 1969. And so Norman Nodell picked up um, the Jungle Book in this new edition um, from 1968. And we're going to take a look at the artwork, the actual artwork in its entirety, along with some bonus material that has never been seen. And of course, everything that I show you is all for sale. Um, and I want to make sure that... Um, everyone gets a chance to take a look at how great this artwork is. So here we have a look at the original artwork to Jungle Book number 83 by Classics Illustrated, uh, artwork by Norman Nodell, and you can see right here at the bottom, it's signed by him. Now this is the original artwork. So I'm gonna show you just the idea. Here's the printed page. And then you can see that the artwork is really nice. Everything you see in the artwork, the illustration here, then you've got the type typography is pasted into these little areas and boxed in. A lot of times, and you'll see this later at the very end, um, some unpublished work will have the actual script written in and then they'll place the um, text box on top. There's also some really cool things about the um, artwork in general. You have little printer notes on the sidelines, you can see them in blue. And these are notes that are telling the printer what the percentage of the colors are, like all flesh tones, 
30% red, 30% yellow. You've got notations on what color the typography should be, what color the boxes should be. And to give you an idea of what the size of these pieces are, the original artwork measures about 14 and a half by 22, almost 20, 22 and a half. So these are large scale boards that you can see the artist had plenty of space to work on to get as much detail as he could. And he really does get a good job at getting the detail in. This is Norman Nodell's work, and this is why he was such a great artist. Um, he broke into the industry after serving in the war as a field artist, very similar to Jack Kirby. And um, I'm just gonna start showing some of the work. And we're gonna move in sequential order. And like I said, we have the entire book in its entirety, the, the 45 pages of original artwork done by Norman Nodell for the Jungle Book, for Classics Illustrated. And even many of the uh, paste-ups still remain. And like I said, the artwork here is much better than the Alex Bloom original artwork. Here Mowgli looks like a child. This is part of his origin story. Shere Khan, you can see him there with, with his stripes. The, uh, the way his, his shoulder and the anatomy of the um, animal looks is much more correct. You can see how there's attention to um, contrast and lighting, where you see the, uh, the light hitting it from a certain side and the, the shading is very nice. And this is giving you a brief um, introduction to who Mowgli is. And as I was saying before, Norman Nodell uh, broke in after being in the army as a war um, artist. And he served overseas. See, he saw wartime, and his job was to create maps and also to do illustrations of the areas. And his work is actually preserved in the Library of Congress. So just like Jack Kirby, he actually um, was honed on the field. In fact, um, Norman Nodell actually um, did a number of, number of work for uh, Classics Illustrated. He also did work for Charlton uh, Comics in their romance line. Look at this beautiful... Um, this uh, illustration right here, very similar to the painted cover. The painted cover is the only thing I don't have from the book which was also done by Norman Nodell, but you can see the attention to the fur, to the detail, to the foliage. Uh, Norman Nodell would do a number of different Classics Illustrated books. He did Ivanhoe. Uh, most notably, he did The Invisible Man. He did um, a number of them, but most notably, he did The Ten Commandments in 1960 for which he won an award for. I think it was the Thomas Alva Award for um, illustration in a, in a children's book. And um, what's interesting about his work on the Ten Commandments is they actually used it. His character designs, his costume designs were used as the basis for um, the Ten Commandments movie that Charlton Heston was in. So his costume designs are the costume designs for the movie. This is, uh, I guess, an, an e-book. Beautifully illustrated. Now, in case um, you didn't know a little bit about Rudyard Kipling, Rudyard Kipling is the writer of the Jungle Book from 18, I want to say 1893 or 1894. And he is a famed English um, or British um, writer who grew up in India. And when he wrote the Jungle Book, he actually used a lot of his background growing up in India in the book and it gave it a sense of authenticity. So it, it shows through even in the, um, even in the um, naming of the characters. Mowgli actually means young child. Shere Khan actually means a tiger. Um, Baloo means a bear. Uh, so he used the language. And if you look at the faces here, the faces really look, um, they look very close to like a more uh, um, realistic version of the Disney um, Mowgli. And so Mowgli looks Indian here, um, and as much as you can see in black and white. Um, and then again, all this attention to some of the details. And he tries to, Norman Nodell at least, tries to be, put as much action as he can into something that's extremely descriptive, 
um, you still get some of these areas where the lighting is really important, where the posing is important, tigers are jumping. Here we have the second story of the Jungle Book, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, we still have the overlay that shows the color, the way that the printer was indicated how to lay color. You see it's actually on the overlay, and then when you lift it up, you see the full illustration underneath. And it's just one of these fun things you get with original artwork. You get to see how the process works. And as I said, all this artwork is going to be for sale. So it's something you can actually have and display in your home. Um, you might not be familiar with the story of King Ancus. And you might be thinking, oh, Classics Illustrated is just capitalizing off of the Disney movie that had just come out. That, you know, was high, incredibly popular. I think it was Walt Disney's last animated film. Um, but the Jungle Book is called the Jungle Book and not Mowgli the uh, Jungle Child or, or something like that. Because not all the stories are about Mowgli, which I'll show you later on. But there also are multiple stories in each of them. So this is actually a story from The Jungle Book. This was actually from the sequel to The Jungle Book, which Kipling wrote in, I think, 1895. And this is one of the stories that features King, King's Ancus. Um, but it's one of these stories that you don't know about in the Jungle Book because you're focused only on the Disney, the Disney part. And you can see some of this, some of these backgrounds are just, you know that this comes from the experience of being in India and living in India and seeing these structures as a child. And it's almost in his, you know, somewhat DNA that, that at least uh, Kipling describing the areas that Norman Nodell was able to go back and put this kind of illustration, all this detail of the rooting and you can see the opening of the archway and the architecture and the snake kind of guiding you through and the play of the snake kind of uh, looping around with the play of the roots looping around and the great distribution of light and dark. And then you have a beautiful portrait of Mowgli with all these perspectives still lining up in line. Cobb with, that looks like a snake with his scaling. These are really underappreciated in comic book art only because Comic book art these days is so um, um, overshadowed or influenced by the Marvel style, the superhero genre, which in many ways, especially in the 1960s, oversized, overmuscled, non-proportional characters, that is what makes them super. But what leaves behind, if you could somehow combine that great dynamicism, you have... Um, you have all this attention to detail, a skull that looks like a skull, you know, anatomy that is, um, is one of the strengths of Classics Illustrated. Here you can see there is a paste up that was um, restored. This area was um, put back in. You can see how it lines up perfectly. Underneath is a, is a same version of a, of a panther, but just not not with the same, they, they needed to have, a, I guess, a redraw there. These are all being done right on the boards. And the boards are heavy, thick boards. So when they're laying down all this, all this material, you know, if they, if they decide to go back and review an area and maybe uh, redo a drawing, they have to do it on the, actual, on the actual artwork, which wasn't a big deal. Here you can see white out that was laid over to get the lighting right on the... Um, on, um, uh, Bagheera. A whole, this is not um, wear. This is actually just a paste up that was just um, put on top. You can see the pages are pretty white. You know, they've got little little yellowing at foxing at the at the edges. But um, these uh, pages were actually they were obviously pre preserved together. But um, and my feeling is they were probably sold by the printer because they also have printer notes at the very end of it. But um, they were all individually wrapped in cellophane. So they were kept stiff. They were kept away from oxygen. 
They were kept piled up, which helped keep the oxygen out of the uh, areas of the pages. So these are really nice um, pages that have really preserved very well. You can see um, these are now going into different stories from the Jungle Book. You almost have like a Hal Foster type of influence going on. Or like some of the early Tarzan pages where you have the feathering of the lines to show form. The beautiful laying of dark to pull out the canyon. You can see also the uh, varying of sizes of the panels. It's much more, um, you can't really say dynamic because dynamic implies a lot of um, action going towards, towards foreground and away from foreground. But at least you're giving a, getting a variety of style. You know, a semi-splash page. Um, this is why Norman Odell's work was just so much, uh, you know, in one way is keeping with the time, in one way is being classic, but still sticking to the uh, classics illustrated format. Great shadows in the background to make the uh, foreground push out. And then we have some of the underwater fights. Really beautiful all around. A classic style that you just don't see anymore. Now that you've read the Classics Illustrated Edition, don't miss the added enjoyment of reading the original obtainable at your school or public uh, library. And this is where the story would have ended, but this is not where our story ends. Because in the original 1983 book, it really does end with that announcement. Now that you've read this, a Classics Illustrated edition, don't blah, 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 enjoyment, the School of Public Library, and you see it right over here. It's the exact same art. And then it goes into a little bio of Rudyard Kipling. And then that's the end. But that's not the end here, because like I said, these probably came directly from the printer. Or this may have been, I mean, I mean, it was sold together and kept together. And this story, Ricky Tiki Tavi, is actually a story from the first Jungle Book. And it's not a story about Mowgli. It's a story about a mongoose outsmarting and defending a family um, from these poisonous serpents. And the artwork is done by Norman Nodell. And it was um, fully scripted. You can see the scripting here. This is the story of Ricky Tiki Tavi, the brave mongoose, and the great war that he fought against Nag and Nagaina, um, which are, which are uh, cobra serpents. And it says, The Jungle Book, page 46. And you can see page 46 in the original writing up at the top. This was page 44, and then there were 45 was the illustration. And all of a sudden, we have a whole new story that's never been seen before. With the uh, scripting all laid out, some of the um, paste-ups are still there. You can see that the art was finished. And this is Classics Illustrated artwork that's completely unpublished, that goes with the Jungle Book. But most likely due to um, pricing, um, conserving paper and costs, this probably was not run for that reason. But this would have been even extra material that should have been published, that was never published, fully illustrated.
and you can see that it goes on 50, 51. The end of the story, the mongoose uh, fights. You can see it fighting, fighting the snake here, while uh, while the people at home are able to shoot the snake, defending themselves. This is all from the original Jungle Book. And then you can see here the final ending of this extra eight pages of story that has never been seen before by anyone. To top it off, there are also, and I'm not gonna exactly go through these because this first page is kind of brittle, but these are the way the print, the, 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 um, the pages were laid out for printing. So as they were run off, you can see the printer, how these marks are marks that line things up uh, so that things can be printed in sheets and then assembled as books. First page, last page, so on and so forth. And this has the whole set. This paper is a little bit more brittle because it's just a thinner paper. But you can see that the only the printed edition of the uh, Jungle Book, the book that saw the print, is there. So the unpublished work is, is unpublished. It's, it's not laid out. I want to thank you for watching this video. It was a real pleasure to show you really just something so unique, a complete book of original artwork from the Silver Age, from the 1960s. Really fun for me to show with you. Um, it's also something if you're interested in purchasing, this is a great investment opportunity. It's really not very often you see an entire book of comic book art come onto the market. Uh, if you are interested in purchasing the entirety of the, of the set, uh, you can reach me at info at brooklyncomicshop.com. My name is Joshua Stallman. Thank you for watching. Please visit our, um, our website, brooklyncomicshop.com, for signed exclusives, art prints, action figures, and, of course, our semi-weekly blog on the history of comic books. Thank you very much for watching.